Surround yourself with the magic. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome aboard the Ariel. My name is Blake, and I'll be your captain and storyteller aboard today's the story of the land. For your safety, please remain seated, keeping those hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the boat at all times. And parents, please make sure to supervise your children, as well as children, make sure to supervise your parents, as we do not want any unexpected turns in today's journey. While most stories begin by turning the pages of a book, our story today begins by entering the mouth of Monstro the Whale. Whale, whale, whale. The same whale will swallow Pinocchio. But do not fear, my princess, he will not be digesting us today. He is rather transporting us to the magical world of Storybook Land. If you thought Monster the Whale was scary for Freda, look to your left, where we can find the cave of the Big Bad Wolf. But do not fear for those three little pigs, as they are just across the way. One in a house made of straw, one in a house made of sticks, and one in a house, you guessed it, made of guaranteed holy fruit bricks. Around the corner on our left, we can find the quaint English village home of Alice from Alice in Wonderland. One day, Alice decided to follow that white rabbit down. Down, down the rabbit hole all the way to Wonderland, where things only became curiouser and curiouser. And if Wonderland is not your cup of tea, then we can look over to our right, where we can find London Park, over which Peter Pan, Wendy, Michael, and John Darley flew all the way to Neverland, with the help of a little bit of pixie dust, her good friend Tinkerbell. Up ahead, we can find the enchanting world of Acrobat, home of a street rat named Aladdin and Princess Jasmine. With their love and the help of an all-powerful blue genie, they were able to defeat Jafar when and still live in the palace on our right to this very day. But prepare yourself, my princess. Things are about to get romantic. As we are now passing under the roads, each week we are ways up with Jafar and Jasmine. Over sideways and under on a magic carpet ride to a whole new world. While most stories here in Storybook Land begin with light and magic, some begin with darkness and mystery, such as the Cave of Wonders just ahead. Legend tells us if you set the all powerful genie tree from his itty bitty lamp. He will grant you three and only three magical wishes. Let's all close our eyes in the Cave of Wonders and make a wish. And see if it comes true. Snow White wished to escape from the grasp of the evil queen. Luckily coming across the forest cottage on our right, home of the seven little dwarves. We can even see their mine up above where they whistle while they work. And Cinderella wanted more than anything to be able to go to the ball. Luckily, the fairy godmother went bippity boppity boo and sent her straight there. But when she left after the last stroke of midnight, her hair is turned into a pumpkin. But do not worry for her, my friends, as she still lives in the castle up the hill, making some tea. This is how she with the wonderful prince party. In fact, we dreamers here in story, but may dream of the most wondrous of things such as the quilted house of flowers on our left, home of the 1933 Silly Symphony, all of my land. Some of you may even be asking yourselves a question, boy, how could you possibly keep all of these plants so small? Well, I have just the answer for you. I have a magical gardener friend by the name of Miss Tinkerbell. She comes at night in spring, fills her pixie dust all over the plants to make sure they never grow up. Walt Disney was a huge fan of this ride in particular because it inspires the lives of storytellers such as yourselves. And speaking of storytellers, coming up on our left, we can find Toad Hall, home of our friends Mole, Rat, and Mr. Toad. But I am so sorry, my friends, as unfortunately Mr. Toad is not currently home right now, as he's up just across the way in Fantasyland on a wild ride to nowhere in particular. 
But beyond it all, we can find Arendelle, home of the one, the only Princess Anna. For with the help of her friends, Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven, they were able to teach her sister Elsa to just let it go. And up ahead, we can find the Alpine village of Geppetto. To bet the wish upon the star for his puppet Pinocchio to become a real boy. And after an encounter with Monstro the Whale, the Blue Fairy granted just that wish for them. We can even spot Oaken's great impulse on our left. I wonder if he's offering us any big summer blowouts today. Let's all wish him a friendly hello. Yoo-hoo! And speaking of summer, the Little Mermaid Ariel wanted more than anything to be a part of our world. Luckily, she was able to do just that, walking upon the land like the humans above her, and meeting up friends along the way where they live in the castle to our right. But my friends, all stories must have a beginning, and our good friend Ariel's beginning is on our left in the underwater sea world of Atlantica, home of Sebastian, Flounder, and King Triton. But alas, my friends, as now, come the time for me to bid you farewell. As everyone approaches the dock, I want to remind you to remain seated those hands, arms, and fingers inside the boat, and away from the dock at all times. And on behalf of all of us here at the Story of Canal Boats, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Here at Aurora's Fair, a safe travel home, and most importantly, a happily ever after. Alrighty, my friends, once our boat comes to a final, Saba will count to the magical number of three, at which point we will all sit up together so we do not have to go whoosh under the sea.